When asked to work on the cover illustration for an unreleased film, I found the idea of digging through the minuscule amount of official Star Wars imagery to be troubling. Even more so when the main character of your commission is a relatively unknown actress with little to offer in terms of portrait photography. What about painting the portrait of a stealthy Sith who only appears in the dark of the trailer as the handsome mysterious type? How on earth, or the galaxy for that matter, does one create an illustration resembling two future icons? What I wouldn't give to be on the level of Drew Struzan, the well-known illustrator of the Star Wars box art, who's had the tremendous opportunity to meet the cast and have them pose for some of the most iconic movie posters out there. In this demonstration, I'll spend 20 bucks on thrift store supplies that dresses Kylo Ren and my partner as Ray. My amateur photo shoot will be the starting point of a lengthy push and pull of pixels. The force is like your artistic talent. It needs to be trained and challenged. Without enough practice, you can lose it. One of the best ways to train is to set yourself up for failure. Bite off more than you can chew. Give yourself a tough lesson to learn from. Let's get started. An action pose looks best when the model's in motion. My idea is to have them sway back and forth with a bit of momentum and forceful activity, changing poses every 30 seconds or so. In the end, I'll have a few hundred shots to choose from. So before we get started, I wanted to tell you a bit about the brushes and shortcuts I'll be using. I've been using the round brush since ninth grade, and here's a great way to control it. Holding Alt plus right click on the PC, you can move your cursor to the left or the right to change the size. As you see, if I go left, I get a small brush, and right, I get a big brush. Likewise, this same feature on the round brush is great because if you go up, you're going to get a soft brush, and if you go down, you're going to get a hard brush. Perfect. And I use this for the, um, the brush, the eraser, the smudge tool, um, dodge and burn tool, but it's all based on this single brush that I've used forever. Go to 14% for your spacing. Shape dynamics need to be on with a pen pressure for size jitter and a minimum diameter of maybe 15-16%. Transfer is going to be great because it gives you a pen pressure in terms of how much flow is coming out of your brush. So this is one single brush stroke right here. I'm barely pushing down on the dark black color and as you see the harder I push down um, I can make this, this three-dimensional shirt kind of thing. Anyway, I let go and, and just kind of do the details, but um, that's exactly how powerful this is. And it really just takes a little bit of pressure to get um, a, a nice glaze, I'd say. Um, or you can press super hard and get the full color you were intending. So I used the lasso tool quite a bit to create custom shapes, and this is just a super bizarre but uh, handy tutorial to show you how I use some of these tools. Uh, I wanted to show you a quick way that I use um, some of these tools to light it. And with the Dodge and Burt tool, I set it to highlights with 12% and uncheck protect tones. This is great because I can get a subtle lighting and just barely, like I said, I'm barely touching um, to get this small uh, effect. I use the smudge tool a ton, but I use it as a sculpting element. So set your strength to about 90% um, and you'll be able to push the color, pull it uh, almost like butter. So you can change the shape of your hand. You can uh, soften some of the colors that are going on and mix them together, almost like an oil painting. Um, go back in and mix this with your Dodge and Burn tool to give a little extra lighting, but you know maybe that's not enough. So I wanted to create a new layer mode. Let's go to Color Dodge because that's a great way to start a lighting scenario. If you hold Alt above the layers, you can connect the two so that it only paints on top of the hand layer. And in terms of colors, uh, I really don't know where to start. You kind of have to mess with it to see what it looks like in your scenario. So in terms of getting a glowingly red fleshy color, um, I'll go with the pinks, the hot hot pinks and hot purples, um, and then mix that with the smudge tool to kind of give a, a, a decent effect, a light side, a dark side. But you know what, maybe that's not enough. Let's create something called a layer mask, which will basically hide everything underneath um, rather than deleting it which is super useful and is something I use um, when I'm doing special effects layers. As you can see, it's a great way to alter the effects layer. Um, mix that again with the smudge tool, as you'll see here, for any mix-ups in order to reveal what's going on under and also soften the edge. Quick smudge, and we're good. 
trace your photography. Surprised to hear me say that? Assuming you have a solid foundation in figure drawing, you can loosely copy the pose of your reference to speed up the process. Besides, after spending several hours in hard cash preparing for these shots, this photography is my artwork, just one of the many tools in our modern artistic arsenal. The idea is to put some of your personal flair into every step of the photo and tracing process. Never let your or any photo dictate the decisions that lead to a final illustration. In this instance, I've loosely traced Ray, and I've actually placed Kylo directly into my PSD to be painted on top of. As you see, this is not the final render or final drawing of Kylo Ren. The art director had a different vision for what he wanted the pose to be, so you'll see I'll, I'll actually switch out the photo several times, and by the end I just decided to go straight in uh, and paint directly on top of Kylo Ren rather than redrawing him. Good reference translates into educated decisions based on reality. So I'll be mixing a bit of my photography, plus a lot of photo reference that I find on the internet, in order to capture the essence or the, the personality of these characters. Like I said, the actress Daisy Ridley, who plays Rey, is relatively unknown uh, and definitely hard to find angles that uh, I'm looking for. Um, so it's going to take many, many hours pushing and pulling these shapes to try and get the personality of her character. Presenting the cleaned up thumbnail to your client can be daunting, and in this case, the editor of the magazine had a different vision for how the illustration should look. Regardless of the amount of effort put into your sketch, it's important to listen to the team and take a hit for the better of your artwork. So here I'm starting out um, the foundation. Basically, I'm building the background. I want to give it the colors um, based on some of the concept art from the film. and. Uh, this is going to be a great starting point to start manipulating um, a lot of the areas of the painting. So, the client changed their mind, as you can see. They didn't want to necessarily go with the star background. So, we had an idea of giving it a half ice planet, half desert planet. Um, so, basically, what I'm going to do is bash a ton of these photos together um, to create this effect. And basically, it's just uh, adding up layer after layer building your foundation and um, creating a disaster, really, that can be cleaned up later on manually. Ever wonder how the industry superstars paint such photorealistic digital artwork? Chances are they're master painters, but they also understand the high-end tricks and techniques to collage, imprint, texture, and manipulate their designs using photography and 3D elements. It's important to get your hands on royalty-free, high-resolution photography for your archives. I'd suggest heading over to gumroad.com to find tasteful photo sets by concept artists for purchase. I personally have taken much of my own photo reference supplemented with a dozen purchase photo sets from the web. The background of this painting is comprised of 30 or more photo layers, utilizing layer modes like multiply, soft light, or screen to collage the many elements of a massive environment. Once a realistic landscape evolved from the photo bash, I hand paint details and hide any obtrusive scenes. But yeah, let's add a little bit of this color to, to, to the scenery. Um, and what I like to do a lot is add an effect and erase it out. So currently I'm on screen, which is giving it a nice glowy blue. Um, but under it was that under it was that warm, warm yellow. So I could do the details of the rocks and almost draw with the eraser. It's not always about drawing. It, it's sometimes about adding a layer mode or adding um, a fog or a glow and then erasing out the details. Um, so adding in these photos isn't isn't enough. You have to light it several times, you have to shade it several times, you have to add textures um, to build up uh, an effect that looks cohesive across the board. So for the Death Star, I've implanted it into the desert, adding this manually, um, but also grabbing photo textures of destroyed buildings um, to create the crashed effect and the debris that may have happened in its um, downfall. But it's just adding the right noise, adding the right amount of color, light, and texture. Um, but you can't do it all over the place, and it can't always be at 100% opacity. So it's usually just a small hint of your texture. Um, and you do quite a bit of erasing. You add uh, your own personal touch, but it needs to be cleaned up by the end. A lot of times I'll add the photo in, and they're just a completely different color. So it's important to pull up your color balance, your selective color, and try and match a little bit of what's going on. So here's a great little way to use the lasso tool to get a, a foundation or a structural built for the project. Um, so here you can see I'm making small selections. 
But yeah, adding your textures, adding your light, erasing your textures, and darkening your textures are all in the toolbox. For me, I enjoy erasing, so yeah, I'll add a, a very soft glow um, and erase out the, the missing, the, the parts that are hidden in shadow, as opposed to um, constantly adding. so tough to find a portrait of Daisy Ridley that will be you know spot on for the pose that I've, I've shot in my photo shoot. Um, so over the course of the video you're going to see me pull up uh, so much imagery to get the anatomy of her face and the personality, um, but it really takes a lot of pushing and pulling. Um, and what I have found by doing master copies or going to the uh, figure sessions is that a human's face is all about these microscopic adjustments. So. Um, over the course of the video, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the face um, and get fresh eyes on it, so I can see what these small adjustments need to be, um, and I can try and tackle it later on. So here's another uh, example of using the lasso tool to create custom shapes. Uh, basically, I'm creating one half of the staff and m mirroring it so that it's completely symmetrical. Building these objects is kind of fun, actually, because you could do it. You don't have to worry about perspective um, too much with such a simple shape. Um, but yeah, it's all about the silhouette. Uh, I I don't have the perfect reference for this um, device that she has, uh, so I'm kind of making it up based on a couple of pictures that I can find on the internet. One of the best pieces of advice I have to give is to step away from your computer. Too many long hours at the desk could lead to injury, frustration, and a general fogginess when you're trying to create a painting. I'd suggest downloading this program called WorkRave, which is a great little tool to get you off your computer so you can do some stretches, get a quick breath of fresh air, whoa, did you see that? And maybe shave, huh? Anyway, it'll help. So as you can see, I've put in the final pose for my Kylo Ren, and I drew him three, four times already. It's just, it, there's no time to redraw him uh, and repaint him. So I've actually thrown in the photograph, and I'm gonna be using this as a foundation for the um, entire painting. It's gonna be manipulated. I'm chopping him into a million pieces and kind of fixing it to, to make sure that the character size and shape is gonna be okay. Um, Anatomy is a big thing, but also you want to make sure that the character feels like he's in a space um, with the character next to him. And so it's going to be a lot of um, a lot of manipulating and chopping, which is kind of just the way that I work. Um, as an oil painter, you do stuff like this sometimes uh, by pushing the paint around at the early stages. But I really, I'm not going to go into any detail um, until a little bit later on. But it's about you know sculpting the shapes and trying to get the personality of the character right um, in order to capture the right um, the right look. Kylo Ren has little to no illustrations of his face online, so I'm using uh, the four or five that I could find that will help me through the process. 
But here's a great example of me using the smudge tool in action. Um, I've created a mess uh, and I want to actually just glide across and create this buttery um, oil paint effect and sculpt and draw with it. Um, the smudge tool has been a superhero to me. It's great um, for taking a lot of the content that I've already used and manipulating it, pushing it, softening it. Um, I hope that hand, uh, the hand demonstration wasn't too creepy, but it's just a basic idea of how I can push and pull some of the color that I lay down. Um, and also when you're using layer modes, like the red of Kylo Ren, um, I, I'll sp splash a ton of it and uh, erase, very messy, um, but you can also see how I'll go in with the smudge tool and I'll adjust um, the shapes and the shadow shapes to, to be nice. But also it's, it's great because you get a bit of variation and softness to the edge. It's completely controllable. Um, this lightsaber, you've probably noticed a couple times I've put in some sparks, um, which I've done research and I've found several high-res uh, firework images. Um, there's some metal uh, spark, I don't know man, there's a ton of, of imagery that goes into Kylo Ren's saber. Um, but for the most part I'm creating a pole um, and then lighting it with red and making sure the red is noticeable. Um, one of the big issues with Kylo Ren being in this snowy background is a lightsaber doesn't look too well on the bright of a white background. Um, so I had to use his cape as somewhat of a, a silhouette shape to get the lightsaber to kind of glow. Um, and the darker the uh, surrounding area is, the brighter Kylo's lightsaber is going to look. Um, and this is just the detailing phase. This is uh, without any effects layers on top. I'm using the um, pixels. I'm pulling them. I'm pushing them and looking at the shapes of the reference imagery to try and pull off um, the form. So it's kind of basic now. I'm, I'm looking at these interesting shapes. Um, I'm making very tough decisions and very detailed ones. As you can see, the lasso tool is a genius, but um, it's probably not going to be the first shape you make. So uh, give it several tries. Undo, 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 and see what you can get out of uh, taking your time to get the right shape. It's great for uh, creating a small selection and then you can color the selection and light it and shade it with the dodge and burn tool. It's really quick. Um, but yeah, a lot of the manipulation is going to happen um, with the smudge tool, believe it or not. I'm, I'm, I draw um, and basically I'm, I'm laying in the structure that can be edited with the smudge tool. Um, Kylo Ren's face is so detailed and, and intricate uh, it takes quite a bit to make sure that everything is going to look right. And also, um, like I said, he's never really on screen. I don't know exactly what he looks like. And if he is on screen, he's in the dark room with fire everywhere. It's crazy. Anyway, um, so yeah, finding the right reference was ter terribly difficult. Um, I went to Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, uh, while I was painting some of this. And I was able to get a, a sneak peek at some of the costumes and what people had put together, which actually really helped. Don't be afraid to use liquify. You've got a, a, a nice drawing, but it's all, almost subtly barely off. Um, basically what I'll do is manipulate it using the transform tool. You can use warp or my favorite, um, liquify. And it's just like these subtle movements going back and forth. Here's a perfect example of how I'll use the color of the red overlay layer and smudge it um, to create the cuts across um, Kylo's material. Um, so not erasing, but smudging to create um, form. When I work with effects layers, um, they're usually on a screen or a lighten mode um, or a soft light. And that way it's not too over the top, but it still um, fills the area and gives us an interesting effect. Uh, and as you can see, I put a layer mask on top of this so that I can erase out and then smudge the layer mask to fix the shape the same way I've been fixing the shape of just about everything with the smudge tool. Creating a snow effect uh, is going to be tough. So it's not just this one layer, um, which was a rusted metal texture, I think. And uh, so using that, giving Kylo all of the blues that are in the background and trying to uh, take him a bit away from the orange, 
to make the lightsaber seem that much more dramatic. So that was a great little effect to add, and it's pretty easy. I've got a splatter brush that I'll use, um, manipulate it and copy it, and then give it a little bit of a motion blur. Mixed with that, I've got a dusty brush that'll um, kind of give a flow to the effect and a, a personality to the to the wind and the, the structure of how the the flow is going. But it's great for um, being a dramatic um, eye movement tool. Well, yeah, so it's about adding your colors um, and erasing them out. And if you do that over the course of three or four layers that you're erasing from, you're going to have all these different variations of color. But yeah, most of my layer effects um, where I'm changing the color is not just a, a flat color. I grab a high-res image of marble, which is what you saw a minute ago, um, and that has a bit of nuance to it. When we visit the museums, in awe of an old master's work, one has to wonder how the painter covered so much ground with such grace. The answer lies in both their discipline and taste. I can't tell you how exhausting it is to create the perfect brushstroke. For me, Control z is my best friend, allowing for several attempts at the very important stage of polishing. In the case of 19th century painter John Singer Sargent, he was notorious for scraping the paint strokes that weren't spot on, creating an illusion of effortlessness in his final works. Like him, a stroke may take a dozen attempts before I can move on to the next section, standing back or zooming out to ensure that the latest swipe of color doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Assuming all is well, I can push through the painting to ensure that every inch is up to my highest expectation. I call it luxury in every square inch. My painting is massive, and if you were to see it on the wall, print at full resolution, it would probably be the size of a museum painting. Um, it's just the way that I was raised. You go to the museum and you see such large imagery with details in every little bit of it. So that's why you see me zooming in and out so often. Um, Make sure that every little piece has got its own personality and, and presence to it. can't wait for the release of our dual magazine covers. I hope you'll consider picking up a copy or two for your collection. I'm sure the team at Imagine Effects will appreciate your support. Head over to their YouTube channel for more video demonstrations. Thanks for following along through the process of creating a Photoshop painting. If you'd like to see more of my work, please head over to andrewtheo.com or let's connect via social media. If you want to see more demonstrations, head over to my YouTube channel where I'll be painting in oil or Photoshop. I can't thank you guys enough for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Live long and prosper.